At this time, we're going to have some tributes before we get into the service. Those who are sitting in the back, if you can draw a little closer. And this is the order in which we're going to go. Minister Sonia Johnson will go first, followed by Earl Smith, and then followed by Dennis DePisa. So the tributes is going to start with Minister Sonia Johnson, followed by Earl Smith, then Dennis DePisa. Today, we of the Compassionate Center pay tribute to Cortez, who was not just a partner in ministry, but a cherished friend and an integral part of our ministry family. Although we are sad that she is still not with us, we are filled with deep gratitude to God for having had the privilege of laboring in his kingdom alongside of Cortez. She joined our team about 14 years ago. And from the very first day, she brought a unique passion and sincere commitment that we can never forget. Cortez was indeed a genuine person. You see what you get. She was a straight talker no nonsense, very bold and always ready to solve problems and become a solution. Cortez expressed her belief in God and her love for him without hesitation. You did not have to guess her purpose for being on the earth, for indeed she lived as a spiritual warrior and a watchman in God's kingdom. Her no was no and her yes was yes. And she was resilient and had an inner strength that could lead an army to victory against any enemy. Cortez was always willing to help, regardless of the time of the day or night. But when she began to roll her eyes, you had to know that she had enough of listening to you or uh, what you were doing was annoying her. Though she was seriously looking, she was so much fun, especially during our days of traveling to conferences and unique expeditions. Those days are etched in memory with so much laughter because we would hear Cortez speaking in perfect English with an accent too, you know when we were lost and rambling on the streets and Cortez who was always the volunteer chauffeur was trying to get directions and always saying don't worry about it I got this Cortez will surely be missed as we remember her posh steps and her dress to kill style as she always created a confident image of herself she was indeed an inspiration of courage and strength and today we are sure that her courage in facing her struggles and her commitment to always trust god will continue to inspire many lives that she touched so to the family and friends more grace and more strength to you know that cortez was indeed a precious gem thank you
morning, everyone present, and to those online, especially my mom in Montreal, who's watching in her kitchen with her friends. My name is Earl Smith. I live in Montreal. I am one of Cartier's first cousins. My late sister, Sonia, and I grew up with Wesley, Cortez, Malcolm, and Arson, and the late brother, Stephen, in Bournemouth, St. George. Cortez, talk to anyone at Cape Orleans, and they will tell you Cortez was a consummate professional. Talk to anyone that knew Cortez, and they will tell you she was quiet in her demeanor, but firm in her convictions. When she knew it was the right thing, there was not going to be any wavering. She was going to stand her ground. Now, talk to me about my cousin. I know I will tell you she was a cousin and a little sister that you depend upon and lean upon. It was a good thing to have a little sister. You tell things to your little sister that you don't tell to your big sister. At least I did. The thing I share with her, I did not share with my big sister, my big sister Sonia. She was a counselor, a confidant, and a keeper of secrets. It pays to have a family member you can trust. I trusted Cortez, quiet and faded away. When dealing with family, she was bold and decisive in her opinions. Once she took a stand, Cortez now became bold and defiant. Now she was the go now she was the go person for advice and understanding and caring. She was a mediator. She was a peacemaker. Now look at my cousin, Stephen, now deceased, Malcolm and Arson. There was a lot of peacemaking to be done. It was a good thing that she worked for Caribbean Orleans because, because she could mediate from Barbados to New York, to Toronto, and even Quebec. Courts, for the love that you have shown, the advice you have shared, the counsel that you gave, the admonition that you cautioned, the lecturing you taught, for just always being there as cousin and little sister, knowing that you will forever, ever miss. As it's found in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, this speaks to the return of the Lord as a thief in the night. If a link is to be made between this and Cortez's passing and that expression, that he comes like a thief in the night, it is simply to say that her passing was unexpected. Cortez was an active person. She was not one to complain of illness or anything for that matter. She was, not, she was so resolved and confident in herself that if she had an issue, she would remark, what you're worrying about, it'll work itself out. Cortez was an independent lady. If and when she was asked for assistance, it was an acknowledgement Behind her. It's a middle thing that even during her short illness, it was obvious that she needed to be aided. Cortez at times was insistent that she could help herself. It was indeed a sad experience for Malcolm Orson and I to stand by her bedside at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital on Tuesday, the 20th of August, to witness her passing at exactly 7 p.m. I'm heartened by the fact that her, in her latter years, Cortez pursued a Christian life. On her dying bed, she had her Bible open next to her. It may come to a surprise to some that at the time of her passing, she was listening to gospel music thanks to Orson 
who accommodated her by placing an earpiece in her ear. I will long hold fond memories of Cortez, who was known for her bubbly, energetic, and high-spirited personality that included an affectionate smile and a burst of laughter. I would hasten to add that the smiling Cortez had the ability to turn like a frowning judge if and when you got on her wrong side. Cortez and I had an amazing relationship. For her, I was affectionately known as D. I can't even remember ever hearing Cortez call me by my Christian name. And for me, she was simply known as Cortez. What we did have in common, there were a few things. We shared a bonded relationship for a new deceased cousin, affectionately known as Sissy. We both shared the principles of calling a spade a spade. Cortez was simply a no-nonsense and down-to-earth person. But she was never afraid to speak her mind or express an opinion. She had this saying, I don't suck up to nobody. If you get me vexed, you will get pleased. For a short woman, she was empowered. What I'm conveying to you is that height was not a determining factor in her strength of character. She was forthright but never offensive. For her, being polite and mannerly were outstanding attributes. To the very end, her expressions of yes please, no please, and thank you were being uttered. She was one who was warm and welcoming. She knew how to conduct herself as she was known to be courteous and respectful, even if you were in her bad books. What I can tell you, if she wrote you off, then you can say a kiss and say a goodbye. But let me give you a little insight of the lighter side of Cortez. First of all, she was a Christmas baby. She relished enjoying her ham and pork. She, like her mom, my Auntie Phyllis, took a delight in destroying the ham bone and a piece of pigtail. Cortez loved her belly. Even while at the Queen Liver Hospital, she called and received a bowl of cocoa and fish thanks to Malcolm's cooking. <laughs> In this tribute, I will share with you my opinion that the fact Cortez was a giver of life. I repeat, she was a giver of life. But she, I should say that she was not a giver of love, a life, but a savior of life. I better repeat that. She was not a giver of life, but a savior of life. And you ask me of what I speak. In this instance, I refer to the fact that due to the generous donation of blood at the birth of my second son, Mario the Pisa, who deceased her, he was able to survive the death at birth and afforded 34 years of life on the surf. For this, his mom, brother, and I are eternally grateful. Today, her journey on earth has come to an end. I'm assured that she made her contribution here on earth in more ways than one. I'm satisfied that she has earned the respect of members of her community. A long-standing resident of Bourne Village and a good friend of mine, on hearing of her passing, remarked, and I quote, a good lady has passed. I never heard a fella say a bad word about Cortez. Finally, I've constantly reflected on the fact on the two last occasions I visited Cortez, including the day she passed. She constantly tried calling my name and trying to tell me something. It was all inaudible. For some reason, I've been constantly hearing a voice in my head, a message which I presume comes from the spirit of Cortez. It simply says, take it to the Lord in prayer. Though she endured pain and suffering in her illness, all indications are that it, she took it to the Lord in prayer. I can report that she died at peace with herself. In closing, I'm compelled to share with you who are here in the congregation and you online or wherever you are, the first verse of the song entitled, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which I hope will resonate with you. And it reads, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we 
you not carry everything to God in prayer. Cornelius is no longer figured physically be very first, but she's certainly not forgotten. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Stand up, please. Dearly beloved, we are gathered to, today to pay our final tribute of respect to that which was mortal of our deceased loved one and friend. To you, members of the family who mourn your loss, we especially offer our deep and sincere sympathy. We share with you the comfort afforded by God's word for such a time as this. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house and many mansions. If that were not so, 
would have I told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. God, our Heavenly Father, we come into this sanctuary with heavy hearts, realizing our utter dependence upon you in times of sorrow. We know you do love us and can turn even the shadow of death into a morning glory. Help us now to wait before you with reverent and submissive hearts. You are our refuge and strength, O oh God, a very present help in time of trouble. Grant unto us your abundant mercy. May those who mourn today find comfort and healing balm in your sustaining grace. We humbly bring these petitions in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
at this moment on behalf of this Generation International Ministries, on behalf of myself and the pastors of this Generation International Ministry, myself, Pastor Stephen Tutu, Pastor Alicia Tutu, Pastor Calvin Husbands, and Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Janice Springer, I will say condolences to the family and to the friends at this time as we mourn our sister and at the same time we sorrow because we know he's in the hands of the Lord. I will ask that you respectfully take your seat as we continue the service. the worship from this generation international ministry worship team they're going to be singing three songs to you and can it be in christ alone and one ten thousand reasons bless the lord oh my soul over to the worship team. please stand
which is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 57, that will be read by Orison Smith. Then we would have the second reading, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 17, read by Aisha Hines. And after those two readings are completed, the worship team will return and give us that hymn, The Holy City. So you will be seated. When the worship team returns, you will then stand for the song. Thank you. A 
reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 57, our final victory. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. The, the comfort of Christ's coming. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord.
I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on the streets. The gates were At this time, we're going to have two poems, a poem from Aisha Haynes, followed by another poem from Lorraine de Pisa, and then the worship team will return with the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. So at this time, Alicia Haynes, please proceed, then followed by Lorraine de Pisa, and the worship team will return with Great is Thy Faithfulness. going to ask you to bear with me. I know it said one, but I chose two. Um, the first one is letting go. The angels gathered near your bed, so very close to you, for they knew the pain and suffering that you were going through. I thought about so many things as I held tightly to your hand. Oh, how I wish that you were strong and happy once again. But your eyes were looking homeward, to that place beyond the sky, where Jesus held his outstretched arms, it was time to say goodbye. I struggled with my selfish thoughts, for I wanted you to stay, so we could walk and talk again like we did just yesterday. But Jesus knew the answer, and I knew he loved you so, so I gave to you life's greatest gift, the gift of letting go. Now my heart will carry memories of the love you gave to me, until we meet again in heaven, where the best is yet to be. The second one is he only takes the best. God saw you getting tired and a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating hard working hands to rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best.
everyone. My name is Lorraine de Pisa, and I'm Cortez's oldest cousin. This poem is in memory of our wonderful cousin who we affectionately call Cortez. And it goes like this. Of all the special gifts of life, however great or small, to have you as a cousin was the greatest gift of all. May the wind of love grow softly and whisper in your ear, we love and miss you and wish that you were here. Deep in our hearts, your life is kept to love and cherish and not forget. No more tomorrows can we share, but yesterday are always there. A silent thought, a secret tear, keeps your memory ever near, in our hearts and forever. Love you, hearts, until we meet again. From myself, Lorraine, my brother Jeffrey, who lives in Virginia, who couldn't make the trip with me today. Also, my brother Dennis, June, Carlos, we miss you and we love you. Rest in peace.
At this time, we're gonna have the eulogy by Malcolm Smith, followed by a special song, and then the next voice you will hear after that will be the senior pastor of this generation ministry, Pastor Stephen Tutu, who will deliver the sermon after that. Malcolm Smith, the eulogy, the special song, and then the sermon by Pastor Stephen Tutu. Fellow mourners, my beloved sister Cortez Fernando was born in Boisville, St. George, to Douglas and Phyllis Smith on June 14, 1959. Her early childhood education was at St. Matthew's Primary School, then on to St. Michael's Girls School, where she received her secondary education. On completing secondary school, she went to the Barbados Community College, where she studied for her A-levels. It was at these two last institutions where she met lifelong friends who were her support and anchor throughout her life. In the mid-80s, she read and completed her degree in public administration from the University of the West Indies, Cayfield Campus. Her first job on leaving community college was at Harrison's department store, where she had a short stint as a store assistant. But it was her transition to Cameron Wireless which defined her employment history. She was one of the elite directory inquiry and overseas telephone operators who defined that company as one of excellence back in the day. She took pride and industry to a whole new level, demonstrated by her commitment and love for her job. She spent just over 40 years in that position and then transferred to internal audit on completion of her bachelor's degree, which remained for another nine years, spending 23 years in total with Cameron Wireless leaving as a company was making the first of its many transitions. It was also at Bartel that she met some of her best and closest friends. I single out in this regard, Heather Bino and Diane Whitney. And it was through her work as an operator that she met Justin Smart, another close friend. Cortez was a voracious reader. She loved books and had an extensive vocabulary as well. At home, you wondered where Cortez slept because most of the bed was covered in books and manuscripts and she read all. It did not matter which genre of novel it was, she read it, she devoured it. She loved words and easy made up her own. Her close friend Heather recently told me that many a time in conversing, she would stop and ask her, Smith, wait, what I mean? He was her own dictionary and would flippantly say, girl, I made that up, yeah. <laughs> then proceeded to her own definition, after which she had a good laugh. Just recently, following her death and going through her personal belongings, we found a whole barrel filled with nothing but books. This does not include the many boxes stored in our basement storage either. Although she was not given much to argumentative and intellectual discourse, if pressed, she had a deep understanding and appreciation of many issues and events occurring in the world. I cannot speak of my sister achieving any national recognition or performing any heroic tasks. Whilst those things are good in of themselves, 
on the microscopic level, they're not as important as how that person makes you feel, how they've impacted on your life. That's what is important. My sister, my sister was a vital and integral part of our family. She was a source of unwavering support and guidance in all that we did. After the death of my brother in 2008, it was really just her and I, because my brother, he lives overseas. And we depended on each other to carry on our family without rancor, without argument, but with all love. Her support was not loud and boisterous either, but quiet, dedicated, full of advice and knowledge, as well as morally centered. She was my biggest cheerleader, as evidenced by the many friends or acquaintances of hers who told me how proud, how proud she spoke of the achievements of my brother and I. She never told me these things, but I often heard that she bragged of her love and her support for whatever we did. That support was reciprocal. In retrospect, those characteristics were also offered to her friends. She was loyal, she was honest, and given to her closest friends. She loved to laugh and clung around. In return, they gave her the love, loyalty, respect, and unselfish dedication that is only experienced when there is true love. I recognize in this regard, Heather Bino, Justin Smart, Beverly Gatsby, Greenwich Greenwich, who stood by her in every way during her recent illness, taking time out to be part of her daily care team. Cortez loved to travel. Whether it was for work, work-related, or for pleasure, it was one past time that brought her immense pleasure. She had traveled to Africa twice, been throughout North America, the United Kingdom, and the Caribbean, enjoying the cultures that she encountered. I remembered that we coincidentally happened to be in Miami at the same time. She had arrived there first, but I only saw her once as she was busy touring, shopping, and enjoying the Miami Vice life, which her friend Danny Whitney and her had pleasure in doing. In recent years, although her overseas traveling declined, it remained a passion of hers, if only vicariously. My cousin Dennis spoke of her firm nature. Yes, she was firm, she spoke her mind. You were never left in doubt about how she felt. However, she did that with love. She did that out of support and compassion for you. So although she has spoken to me many times very sternly, even the Friday before she died, she held both horse in her hands and she firmly told us to give our lives to God. And it's not in a fervent manner as a preacher would do it, but it's you give your life to God here. Get ready to meet God here. I mean, and I was so stunned. But that was her manner. She meant well. It was out rancor or with boisterousness. Cordes became a devout Christian over 18 years ago after accepting the Lord as her savior, first being a resident member of this church, you know, the New Dimensions Ministries. I wish she was also a part of the Help Ministries. More recently, she joined TGIM, called This Generation International Ministries, led by Pastor Stephen Tutu, 
where she served, served sorry, in the usher's ministry. As of all things, Cortez was completely devoted to her church and her Christian life. Daily, she completely engrossed herself in Bible studies, sermons, and church sessions locally, as well as those being transmitted online or on YouTube. Nothing could get between her and these daily sessions. Everything had to be shifted around these meetings, so much so that it caused concern amongst some family members in relation to this abject level of dedication. Cortez will have it no other way. Earlier this year, when Hurricane Barrow was approaching and in declining health, my sister came in the middle of the night to bless every room in my house, praying for a past passage free from destruction or physical harm. Whatever she was into, whatever she participated in, she gave it her all. This is the highest level of character necessary for personal achievement and national development. She embodied that spirit. On behalf of our family, let us now take this opportunity to thank you all for sharing in this ongoing service of celebration of the life of our sister. Your expressions of sympathy and condolences is greatly appreciated. We would also like to publicly acknowledge and thank Heather Bino, Justin Smart, Drina Greenwich, Nurse Rosemary Iluma from Nigeria, Beverly Gatsby for their love, devotion, and friendship. They were there daily, whether at home or in the hospital, to complement her care during her illness. This is what true friendship and love is about. We shall all have an experience this level of friendship. I recognize and thank my sister Jeanette Williams in Trinidad, who could not be here at this time, Dennis and Lorraine de Pisa, June Giddens, our sister-in-law, Sonia Smith, who ensured that Cordes got the meals that she liked and wanted, our niece Aisha Haynes, Kirk and Juliana Tate. To my brother Orson, who left work in Canada and arranged to work from Barbados to provide 24 7 care for her sister. Your devotion and dedicated care will forever be recognized and appreciated. I'm not now sure if you are an accountant or a nurse. <laughs> We never left, you never left home during this period and were there every day, or sorry, every step of the way. To our favorite Aunt Marjorie of Montreal, Canada, and who loved quarters like her own, I say, take courage, knowing that although she is not here physically, she will always be at your side in spirit. I take this opportunity to thank Earl Smith, my cousin from Montreal, and my brother, Wesley Bolden, for their support. I thank Garvin Warden and Azul Stroud for always being there for my family and I. To all my friends, Nicole Weeks, Sabrina Bolden, Amanda Edwards, and associates, too many to mention, who sent an encouraging and supportive word or who helped us in any way, I say thank you. To my work colleagues from the Grove Group Resorts, to Adrian and Antonia Elcock, Pat Boyce, and Samantha, thank you all for your grace. <laughs> Sorry, thank you all for your grace and support. I want to recognize my aunt, Dorothy Goddard. I want to thank and recognize my neighbors and friends from Bournesville, St. George, too many, too, too numerous to mention. A special shout out goes to Shondine Thornhill, my close friend for over 45 years. 
<laughs> and Covey Branch of Henderson and I keep the criminal directors for the support, for the love, and for the guidance. Cortez, I love you. And I will miss you. I will never forget you. This has been particularly difficult for me because I was there from the very beginning. I watched try to have. But she slowly stepped away. Many people said that, that I was her favorite. I never felt that way, but I remember distinctly when I first left second grade school, 1983, and I wanted to, I wanted to live in the big city. I didn't expect to be living in Barbados. And at that time, there was Super Center had silver checks, and you used to, when you buy groceries, you get these set of silver checks. You had a form, you fill them out, and you can redeem the silver checks for a plane ticket. So I used to go in Bridgetown, bypass from Commonwealth, we're going to Bridgetown. They didn't have to go to Bridgetown, but we're going to Bridgetown and stand by the cashiers. And as people bought the groceries and they dropped the silver checks, I would pick them up, fill out my form. The ticket was $959, now I forgot that. And I got a total of $480. I didn't have to ask. She knowing that I wanted to go and see my cousin Sissy, my aunt Marjorie, so badly. She put the rest, the rent of the money. And I was so shocked that my mother had told me, see, you're so favorite. So bad she like you. And off I went on August 5th, 1983 to Canada. I will never forget that. And many other things that she did for me. So, thank you all for coming. I'm sorry I'm so emotional, but this is part of the journey. Cortez, I love you. May you rest in peace. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Before um, the special song comes and the uh, message for today comes, um, it's imperative that I, um, we're going to take an offering. And um, the family asked if we could take an offering and that they wanted to bless the ministry. But I have other plans. And so we're going to take an offering. Feel free, whatever you want to give. Um, our sister's passion was always missions. As you heard the brother sp speak, um, he went to Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, and various places to preach the gospel. And so when this special song is going on, I want us to take an offering and there's a team that he used to travel with to go to Africa to do missions. And then we will donate every cent that we collect in the offering to the missionary team to go and continue his legacy of preaching the gospel. Does that make sense? So I will invite um, our songstress to come and give the special song.
love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I say
have the ushers put the um, offering in an envelope. I want to invite um, Pastor Rustin and our sister Avis Ford. Can you please come forward? Pastor Rustin and Avis Ford, if Avis Ford is around. Um, can I have the ushers um, bring the, the donation we want to make? Uh, Pastor Ralston is a missionary that goes to Africa and for many years had worked with our sister Edda Cortez and they've been to various places preaching the gospel, gone to villages, places where there's no electricity. And um, our sister Cortez Smith was passionate about that. So it makes sense that the offering we have taken today goes to what his passion was. So that though he's passed on, her legacy still lives on. Amen? Amen. How many of you um, listen to Derry Prince on the radio? Derry Prince died in the 90s, but his legacy still what? Goes on. And it's the least we could do. And so, um, Pastor Austin, um, there's been a bit of a delay, but they're going to bring the offering, and we're going to give that donation to you to take it to Malawi. I think that's your next trip. Next trip to Malawi. The, the people there that want the Bible in their own language and everything, that is at our Cortez contribution. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This morning, I just want us to bow down our heads in prayer as I bring a very short message, very straightforward message. And I want you to talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I want you to speak to my heart in this time and in this season. Our great God in heaven, we thank you and we bless your name. We exalt you, you that reigns on high, you that rules from above. And I ask the Holy Spirit divine that in this time and in this season that your ways will minister grace to the hearts of the people. That everyone at the sound of my voice will remember this message and number his days. That your name alone will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. A great man of God had two sons and he was about to pass on and one of them was a committed Christian and the other one didn't want to have anything to do with God church or the Christian life and the father looked at the one who was a Christian and said good night and he looked at the one who was not a Christian and said goodbye. And the young man burst out crying and said, Dad, you told my brother good night. Why are you telling me goodbye? He said, I said to him good night because I know when he passed on, I will see him again. But because you have not made a decision for Christ, I don't know whether I will see you again. So the best I could say is goodbye. Life does not end on this planet. And it's unfortunate that the times and the seasons in which we live, with all the education and the financial prowess of people, people behave like there is nowhere to go. I got news for you. The earth is an airport and we are on transit. The earth is an airport and every one of us we on transit 
Now, if you ever traveled and been to um, some of these big international airports, you will think it's a supermarket mall. There's loads of shops around, things to buy, things to do. There's a place to massage your back, place to eat, place to shop, expensive clothing, all kinds of things at the airport. And sometimes, some people forget that they are traveling. And so though they've checked in, they've gone through security, they get distracted by the shops, they get distracted by the activities at the airport that their names are announced. Could all passengers proceed to gate number 21? For passengers traveling to London, please proceed to gate number 21. The gate closes in 15 minutes. And you will still find some people that will not pay attention. They're so engrossed in the shopping and in the conversation or where they browse on the internet or whatever they're doing that they don't pay attention to the announcement. And so finally, they start running to the gate. And sometimes the air hostess might tell them, sorry, the gate is what? The gate is closed. One of these days, whether we like it or not, we are all on transit. And we have a place we're going to. Life does not end on planet Earth. Life begins somehow on planet Earth, but it doesn't end here. Our sister lived her life serving God. Every morning that I get to church, she will be at the gate. As a proper watchman, he will be at the gate. Welcoming people to church. And it's always a challenge for me when I look at her, for her to wake up, come all the way from St. George to the city, and be there on time for prayer and start. And so when I see the younger ones coming in late, I feel like lining them up and giving them some lashes. Because she was punctual and she did what she could do for the kingdom of God. And I wanna tell you, it doesn't matter how much food and how much healthy food you eat. One of these days you're gonna go. How many of you know that? It doesn't matter how much metal you lift up at the gym. One of these days you're gonna what? You're gonna leave this earth. The question is, how do you leave this earth? You know something that is fascinating about human beings? If you have an interview, you're prepared to go to the interview. If you're traveling, you're prepared to travel. You pack all your luggages and everything, pick up your passport and everything. But there is one journey every one of us is going to make. And unfortunately, people behave like they're not going anywhere. And this morning, I want to tell you, it is important to prepare because on this travel, there are no options. You cannot opt out. There is an appointed day that you're gonna leave. And this appointment day is already set. When the time comes, no matter what doctor we give to, we can fly to the United States, United Kingdom, it will not make any difference when your time comes. But when your time comes, my question to you is, what will be your song? If you can spend, and God bless all the ladies, if you see a lady that wants to go out, the time it takes for in the bathroom, and the time it takes before the mirror, the seat before the mirror, you know, they put the foundations, the pillars, the windows, the doors, they take their time because they want to be the look apart to wherever they are going to. And a woman are not like men. They match the colors and everything. But today, I want us to prepare like them. Make sure 
So your life is pleasant to the Lord. Make sure your life is pleasing to the Lord. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm quite aware we're living in a country where every Tom, Dick, and Harry says, I'm a Christian. But have you made a personal decision for Christ? Have you made a personal decision for Christ? Can you say, without a shadow of doubt, that when you, you close your eyes today, that you are bold to face the Lord and say, Lord, I live my life and I, I please you in all things and in everything that I did. That's the question. And our sister lived her life to the fullest. She's gone to her maker. And because she was a missionary, the most important thing I can do on these days is preach salvation. The most important thing I can do is somebody give his life to Christ today. Because one of these days, you're going to close your eyes. And let me tell you something that we human beings never consider. This could be your very last sermon concerning salvation. Because not everybody is going to be sick and lie in bed and have the opportunity to make his ways right. There are those that will go on a trip and in an accident, in a split second, they're gone. There are those that will go to bed and never wake up. The question I want to ask you today is, if it happens that way, are you ready? Are you ready? Now, do not say, when I die, I will find out. No, 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 no. Anybody that is traveling, make sure that he got a passport. And not only has he got a passport, he makes sure that he's got a visa to the country he's visiting. Are you getting me? You must have a passport. And you must have a visa in the passport. Otherwise, the immigration officer is going to turn you back. They're going to put you on the next available plane and send you back. The only problem with eternity is you're not coming to earth to have a second chance. There is no second chance. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Once. You're not going to die twice. Forget that thing about review. Reincarnation. That oh, you were born, you came as a man, and next time you'll come as a woman. You were born into a poor family, next time you'll be born into a rich family, and life will be easy. Forget that thing. You have one chance in this life, one chance alone. And I want to tell you no sin is big and no sin is wide enough to keep you in bondage because there is somebody that has already paid the price. And the person that already paid the price, his name is Jesus. He knew I couldn't pay the price. He knew you could not pay the price. He knew that we couldn't stand the chance at the judgment of God. And so he came into the world, took the sin of the world and died on the cross and shed his blood. All you have to do is to accept his free gift of salvation and change come and leave for him. Lastly, there are those that go to church and say, well, pastor, I, I, I've given my life to God. I gave my life to God 10 years ago, 20 years ago. When it comes to eternity, it doesn't care about history. You gave your life to God 10 years ago. Are you still living for him? Are you still living what? For him. And so you're going to make a decision. If we want to see our sister again, then we got to make that decision. He's not dead. She's alive. So how do you know she's alive? Well, the last time I checked, Abraham was dead and he showed up with Lazarus. The last time I checked, the Bible said Moses was dead, but he showed up at the Mount of Transfiguration. 
where it tells you a righteous man does not remain in the grave. He goes into the presence of the Lord. And I want to tell you, you can make that decision. Now, in making the decision for the Lord, you don't need any religious language to make that decision. All you need to do is pour your heart out unto God. The Bible says in the day that Jesus was being crucified, there were two thieves on the cross. One of them said, Master, remember me in paradise. Now, can you imagine in church somebody comes and says, Pastor, uh, tell the Lord to remember me. What kind of prayer was that? He did not pray in the name of Jesus. He didn't fight. He didn't shout. He didn't do anything. All he said was remember me in paradise. Because the Lord I'm talking about can read the intents of your heart. It is not the vocabulary you use that lead you to salvation. It is the heart in which you seek the Lord that the Lord will bring you to the place to become his own. One of these days, it is our sister's funeral now. Who is to say that it will not be one of our funeral tomorrow? My question to you is, are you prepared for eternity? She was. You know, when her brother was giving the tribute, Malcolm, he looked at you and said what? You need to give your life to God. Exactly that's how she speaks. Her last wish was preaching the gospel. What would be your own last wish? Was your own decision for him? I want you to stand to your feet. I'm not going to ask you to come forward and say a sinner's prayer. But like I said, the thief on the cross never said what? Sinner's prayer. He knew. He knew he needed God. He knew all he needed to do was call. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. You know, there are people that only go to church twice every year. Christmas time and Easter time. And there are another group that go to church during weddings and funerals. But do you know that it's not your attendance at church that makes a difference? It's a decision you make for Christ. It's a decision you make for Christ. And I want everyone to bow down your heads. And in your heart, talk to the Lord. If this was you, would you spend eternity with the Lord? Or you will spend eternity in hell? There are only two places. The narrow way and the broad way. The broad way leads to destruction. The narrow way leads to heaven. It's a reality. It's not a figment of imagination. The sad reality is anybody that does not believe in eternity will eventually believe in eternity. But in a place they cannot make the right decision anymore. That is why on a day like this you need to re-examine yourself. If this was me, am I ready for eternity? Father, we thank you on this day as we celebrate the goings of our sister into eternity. And as our sister have transisted to be with you, Lord, I pray for those of us that are still here. We still have to make a decision for you. We still have to overcome temptation. We still have to live right in this world. Lord, I pray that at the sound of my voice as many that are making a decision for you, grant them the grace. Call them to yourself and let your name be glorified in their lives. And in Revelation chapter 14 verse 13, then I heard a voice from heaven say, write this, 
Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now. Yes, says the Spirit. They will rest from their labors, from their deeds. For their deeds will follow them. Everything we do in this world will follow us. Question is, what are you doing? What decision have you made for the Lord? Father, we thank you. As we bring the service to a close, I pray for the family. And I say, God of all mercy, we look to you in this moment of sorrow and bereavement. Comfort these dear ones whose hearts are heavy and sad. Will you be with them, sustain and guide them in the days to come. Grant, O oh Lord, that they may love and serve you and obtain the fullness of your promises in the world to come. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to him to whom be glory forever and ever. And let everybody say amen. And let everybody say amen. You can take your seat for a moment. As I will ask, I'm the phone director. Um, everyone should wait for the procession, the recession to go first before we leave the hall. Please do not leave the hall before the recession. If it's your family member, it will not be good. It is a lack of respect. So, lest comport ourselves as the recession takes place and we file out, then the rest of us can leave the hall. I want to take this opportunity to thank Apostle Stephen Hallford and Apostle Sandra Hallford for giving us this hall for the service. Um, when I came to Barbados from England, this is where I used to attend church. And so I always keep coming back. And um, God blesses upon the technical team for helping us this morning and all the ushers and the coordinators that open the hall for us. I want to say God bless you to you. Car number MB8282. MB8282. Um, your attention is needed urgently outside. Urgently outside. Shall we all stand to our feet? And I will ask the worship team to give us a song as we go for the recession.
Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by your sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. And at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister, Cortez Fernando, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Cortez Fernando and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son Jesus, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. A grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those their love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus, Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon her. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And the Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
The hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ the solid rock I stand.
tastes so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. That is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, in the sweet by and by.
Love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy. Yeah. 
few more weary days and then I'll fly away, fly away, fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away, fly away. you. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, this your servant, Cortez Fernando, who has gone before us with a sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant unto her and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now to God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit you this day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord.